Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I always say that, don't I? Wherever you are in the world, it's good to be with you. Good morning, Phoebe Francis in Dubai. Good morning and greetings to all. <laughs> and Thank you, Graham. in Bahrain. Good morning, Graham and Phoebe. Is is the weather fine for this weekend where you both are? It's it's perfect inside the room. <laughs> Outside, <laughs> I can't see the same. Perfect inside the room. And Phoebe, I, I just came you... from uh, I I just came from a rainy space to a hot space, so oh, it is wow. good. <laughs> wow. Well, where I am at the moment, they're talking about this being a winter heat wave. It's unseasonally really warm and going to be hotter in the next few days but of course when we when we are now recording this it's weekend no let's be honest let's be honest and up front here's a confession it is saturday so typically what happens on the weekend on saturday what do we do I'm, trying, I'm trying to get personal, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, we spend time with the family oh. and look after this stuff. The We need to, you know, do the chores within the family and the house that we couldn't otherwise on the work days. Basically, wow. this is it. Okay. Phoebe, what's your response to my question? What do you do? Yeah, so this Saturday... This Saturday is a bit more special as we just finished our vacation and now tidying up, organizing the home for the new week starting and also the academic year starting from my perspective for my son. So it is a special family time, making sure that things are in order. Wow. So you've just used an important word, uh, and that is family. Uh, and yeah. Muhammad, because you said it's a special day for the family, special week for the family coming up. And Muhammad said, yeah, it's family. We're sorting out things. We're doing this. So today, what about we talk about leaders and family? Oh, yep. Absolutely. What about, but there aren't they only leaders when they're at work? No. No. <laughs> No, I, I, I misheard you. I mean, um, Graham, leaders are leaders, not just at work, not uh, if I heard you correctly. Leaders are leaders 24-7. Now, I yeah. say that in regard to the the office or the organisation. I don't mean that you're waking up at, at 3, 3 o'clock in the morning and needing to do work. What I'm saying is that the same per, you are the same person as a leader, you are the same person 24 hours a day. So therefore, if you're the same person 24 hours a day, when you go home and you're a wonderful leader, when you go home, you don't say, oh, my gosh, thank goodness, I can take off my leadership jacket. And um, <laughs> that's going to be totally different now. Or do you? Do you take off no. your leadership jacket? Uh, yeah, it doesn't. You take off. You do. By the way, you do take off your jacket. I mean, and tie. That's the literal physical one. <laughs> no, but your be but, but your behaviors. Let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah but the behaviors, uh, the core behaviors, and, and I, I cannot uh, uh, delay the fa this part. The leadership challenge, five behaviors, five right. practices. Actually, they are uh, they are the I mean, ideal behaviors that if we want to talk about, otherwise there are so many qualities of behavior, of leadership as one of the studies where the leadership challenge presents is honest, uh, inspiring, all that. But the main five, five practices really, they stay with you as a, as, a, as a leader, even at home. So hang on, because we know that one of the, 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 the top four characteristics of admired leaders is honesty. So are you saying you've got to be honest with your wife and your children? Yeah. <laughs> oh, exactly, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. One little insert that I could hear, and this is when I'm talking, because I'm pleased that you brought up the five practices and their linkage to family. You don't leave the five practices at work. 
you you're leaving these behaviors as i said all the time so when i'm running a workshop and i talk about do what you say you will do or d w y s y w d and i won't say the words that are in the quran in arabic because my arabic is so bad but we know that that those words in arabic are in the quran right so i talk when i'm talking in a workshop i say my ch I have always been like this. It's been fundamental to who I am that I always do what I say I will do. And I then say, I never said to my children, we were going to go to Disneyland if they were good or that this was going to happen if this happened. Never did I say or make a promise or an undertaking to them that I knew I could not deliver. That, to me, was an important part of being a father, that if I said something, they knew that that was what was going to happen or wasn't going to happen, that they knew it all the time. Mm -hmm. And here I can inject another little piece in here because I, I believe that leaders, and I'm going to come back specifically to the five practices, I think, but I believe that leaders are not d directive, but they are influencers. They influence yeah. people by their behaviour and what they do. And this is a personal reveal. And I know that in certain cultures that this is a bit of a challenge for people when I tell them this. But I, I never, I've never said to my children who are now adults and have children of their own, in two out of three cases, but I've never said to them, you should or you need to or you must. I've never said that. I've influenced my children. Now, I know that some fathers who will be listening to this now say, no, 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 as a father, you've got to tell your children what they should and shouldn't do. I don't agree with that, but I'm not going to come around telling people that, that they must change and do what I was doing. I just know that I felt it more empowering for my children that I influenced them and that I didn't. Be, I wasn't directive. You must do this. I'm your father. Do what I tell you. That's my style. It's always been my style. Certainly as the children got to their teens and beyond. Before then, I was probably a little bit more, um, don't put your hand on the hot stove. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, whereas otherwise, I might say, Are you sure it's a good idea to put your hand on the hot stove? No. Uh, so that's that's a personal reveal gentlemen, uh, and I believe that the Absolutely. same applies and the modelling the way applies at work and at home. Phoebe. Yeah, I think, I think uh, Graham, when, when you said modelling the way, and this is something which we all have to be more careful about. How am I modelling in my workplace and in my home? And I, I remember my father once highlighting this aspect, you know, like uh, you will be behaving more like me because you are seeing me in that stage. Yeah, yeah. And, and when I see and look at my son, how he behaves, he is looking at me, how I am acting, how I am performing tasks, how I am uh, doing my conversation. So as you highlighted, you know, what what variations are we making when it at, at workplace and at home? Yeah, and this this uh, this this brings in a, a conversation I heard from uh, one one uh, thought leader. His name is Professor Manfred K. Divries. I just mentioned that he 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 says that uh, you know in order to it was during an interview which he was saying highlighting one aspect that. Ask your family members how you are behaving at home. That wow. shows a big mirror for you. And what impact, especially ask your kids how they are being impacted by you. See, we say and, that we say that, that we should say ask that of the people we are leading in the workplace, but to say it to our children, <clears throat> yeah. And, and 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 this this gives you you know uh, how they are experiencing you at at home, as 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 you mentioned, leadership is everyone's business, and you are leading at each moment. Yeah, 
Now, yeah. is, is that is that in, interactions taking you forward, or is that interaction taking you backwards? Yeah. Is that more? Is that following the practices which we always like to uh, inform? You know, follow the five practices of exemplary leadership. Are you modeling the way, and that way will be modeled in in your home? Yes. Children in the home, we, we're fathers, we know this, and I'm sure that others who are listening to us or now will relate to this, that our children read what we are doing, see what we are doing, and they copy that. So this is where another reinforcement of model the way and where model the way at home is important. Let me give you an example, and I won't be too specific, but I'm, I know that as, as well, I'm sure... <laughs> Oh, I'm going to assume that as parents, sometimes our child of maybe two or three might say a word. I'm not going to say what sort of word it might be, but a word that we believe is not an appropriate word for that child to say. Um, and uh, it's it's might be what we sometimes call a rude word or not a word that children, anyone should be saying. And so the child says that and the parent turns the child and says, don't you say that. Where did you learn that? <laughs> and the child doesn't say it, but kind of looking up going, you said it two days ago. <laughs> when you jammed your finger uh, or what, what, whatever. So children, you know, they, they see what we are doing. So let's wander, walk us through, Muhammad, the, the other practices that we, yeah, other practices and how they relate at home. Yeah, since you already opened the model the way, let me let me close model the way before we go to enable others to act. Um, I keep um, annoying, let me see, my children with don't eat junk food, don't eat bad food, eat healthy food. At the end of the day, I can't be a full model <laughs> for them. But uh, as a caring father, I have to tell them, and, th and many times I need to protect them by uh, preventing or stopping bringing some poisons into house, which is called food. But I noticed lately that my, one of my children, and this is the, I, 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 so I cannot say I am modeling the way, I just discovered how modeling the way is effective. My second sons, uh, my, my, my wife said, your second son is not eating sugar, stopped sugar. I said, why? She said, it's because of you, because it's been three months, you have stopped sugar. And now he is following you. I, I never wow. remember saying don't eat sugar because they are young and they mm -hmm. have some sugar in their food anyway, added or not, they have sugar. But my son decided to follow my steps where I didn't say do it. And it wasn't part of the uh, stop, stop, stop list of bad food. But because he was watching his dad, he did it. So just realizing the power of model the way, not following it even, is already powerful. <laughs> yes, absolutely. What we do, they see. Here's another one. You know, in the days when we, we're kind of used to putting the seatbelt on the in the car now, um, we should be automatically doing. We shouldn't have to think about it. But there were times some when we're getting our children used to this that we'd say to the child, "Put your seatbelt on," and there were times when the child wouldn't put theirs on because mum and dad haven't put theirs on. Well, dad who's driving hasn't put his seatbelt on. Well, why should I? If you you know, these little things are important because they are watching our behaviours. It's the same as what happens in the workplace. So leadership is in the family. Bibi. Yeah, this this brings me to another story which I experience, inspiring a shared vision. You know, and uh, uh, and that is because of the power of words which my father has. Uh, shared the stories he has uh, told told us. You know, uh, this this is incident with respect to uh, uh, being in grade twelve in India. We call it pre degree, and I had scored very less marks 
that is almost less than 50 percentage that is 49 percentage you know and you know being in that kind of competitive space uh, i was feeling a bit uh, down depressed in that space where wow what happens next whether you get an opportunity to study for higher education but the power of words that's why you know the inspiring the shared vision phoebe you are uh, you, you, your life is not determined by the marks you score in a school don't worry you can do well and that words from my father inspired me and still inspires me to move forward wow and after 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 that i am happy to share that uh, i got university rank for my masters completed two more masters after yeah, that three so, master degrees so, yeah so th these these are uh, you you know imagine that this kind of inspiring words happens in the workplace yeah. how that will impact the team and, and I, i'm still motivated by that powerful words which my father said to me and it was uplifting and it was actually practice number 2 inspiring a shared vision phoebe we have opportunities outside so, don't worry about what happened so this is something which i just want to share the power of words from the family absolutely absolutely i'm going to round the conversation off at the end with a really important thing to bring this all together but what you're saying is absolutely right and i'm re reflecting on my father uh, who was who was an older father uh, and what he he didn't achieve any stellar heights in his career uh but he was doing things in the time of the 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 years that are so vastly different to what we're doing now he he, he used to tell stories uh which probably fed my learning about how to tell stories but my father then became for what he was not at a high position at all but because of the person that he was he was very well known in the city where we grew up at the highest levels um he was known by prime ministers and others and he was not in that area of of working so closely with them that he would be known he was a humble man and he had a let's just say kind of ordinary lower position and i don't mean that negatively but he was open and and warm with the people that he made interactions with and i hope that i've learned that maybe from him um and and learned and was aware of the people that he knew at the highest level you know we we used to say dad knew everyone or everyone knew dad that was the sort of person he was and in the sense that was inspiring and and helped help me as well so Muhammad. I will uh, I will bring a, a lighter example of uh, inspire a shared vision uh, about my children when they were young. I used to take them to the mall because their mom must shop in that mall, and as she is busy shopping, I have to take the kids other places in the mall to play. So there were places to play like you know games etc. And that was okay when they were young. And then my son grew up a little older. Right? his his younger uh, sisters are still okay with the uh, playing there in the playground etc <laughs> but then once one day i said yalla we are going dad where are you going we are going this place which you like uh uh i don't like going there but 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 you used to go there and play not anymore and then i looked at him oh my god he's taller than before he's not uh, that young boy so and we cannot leave him at home i have to take him and he's insisting i i won't come so i so th thought quickly thought quickly and i said aha uh -huh. wouldn't you like i remember that he is a big fan of the spanish team football team real madrid okay so i said ah uh, would you like me to buy you a t-shirt of real madrid they sell it in that mall <laughs> really dad I am coming. I need to get I the right size. <laughs> <laughs> Until today I give this example in in leadership that people won't come to you with you on the same train unless the train is taking them to where they want to go also. Not only where you want to go. 
So you should inspire a shared vision <laughs> where we are going somewhere, but you're going to get something there. You're going to get something there and you're going to play. And most importantly, your mother is going to spend your dad's money. <laughs> uh, family, that's what it's all about. So what about, what about challenge the process? Well, the third practice. Give me an example of family in that situation. Yeah, I, I just I just want to bring in, uh, you you know, the challenge for us is that actually it, it is it happens even now, uh, especially the conversations around. Uh, again, uh, Graham, thanks to you, the questions. What if? How might we? <laughs> So we, we have these conversations at home uh, with respect to, uh, again, th th this was a stage in which my son was exploring uh, his admission process for a graduate program, a degree program. So yeah, ch challenging the process, uh, son, what can you do? What approaches can you take? What, what, what are the ways in which you, you can uh, reach out and asking? What if you write an email to the head of the institution? What happens? How and it... and this, this was actually leading to new and improved areas, which which was which was not touched in the past. Bringing in and and successfully, he found a scholarship based program. So that is the outcome of that. So uh, again, that that. Again, I, I like to thank uh, you as well as uh, my other mentors in that process. So implementing that, I'd imagine that if we if we do that with our colleagues in the workplace, on, on improving, innovating, oh, sure, do things. And how easy is it for children, particularly at a younger age, to say, "I can't, Daddy. I can't, Daddy." And what should Daddy say? Oh, I'll fix it for you. No, what should daddy be doing? <laughs> Encouraging the child to find a way or helping the child find a way to solve the problem. Yeah. 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 That's one day, one day, I, yeah. Sure. Sure. One day, my son, I bought him because he did well at school, since at school are starting now. And I bought him a camera because he was fond of photography. And we brought the camera home. Uh, and he wanted to unbox it and install it, right? Uh, you know, set it, set it up, start, etc. all that. Uh, he had a very simple camera. This is more complicated. And he said, Dad, how do I do this? I can't read the instructions well. It's too complicated. And I answered, well, you figure it out. You do it yourself. In fact, the real reason was I didn't know how to do it myself as a dad. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I looked, I was busy and I looked aside after an hour or so, the full camera is installed. He figured it out. He did it himself. And how much better is it for him, his learning, his growth, for him to be, for you to be challenging him to find the, the solution rather than you solving his problem, right? Really good example. So maybe yeah. that ex maybe that example also fits enable others to act. So being a lazy dad, here you go. I give you an example for two practices: challenging the process and enable others to act. Yeah, and now that we're on to enable others to act, I, you know, I said earlier that I I wasn't telling my children what to do, but I was encouraging them, encouraging them, and I was empowering them as much as possible. And one one example with with my one of my children, <clears throat> we were driving along somewhere, and she she was about to start the final two years of her schooling at a pretty good school, and it was a private school, and it was it was going to cost money to send her there, and she said, "Well, I want such and such," and we we pulled over to the side of the road easily and not in anyone's dangerous area and i said she was surprised that we were pulling over why would i pull over and i said we were going to have this conversation later but i think we should have it now how about that <clears throat> oh what 
I said, my sending you to this school, no, I said, first of, first of all, I said, when you're going to this school, I will never say to you, study harder. I'll never say, you only got an A, why can't you get an A++? I'll never say to you, you must do better. I'll never do that. I said, my sending you to this school is my gift to you. And I know that you will make the very best that you can with this gift. Is that okay? And she said, uh, yes. I said, we won't have this conversation again. Okay. She said, yes. I started the car and we drove off. We didn't have the conversation again, but what it meant <clears throat> was that I was never, and I was quite happy this for this, never saying, you can do better. Why can't you get better results? Go and study harder. I was never going to do that. So there was no issue between the two of us in those last two pressure yeah. years when we want our child to, or our children to do really, really well. So I was empowering her as an enabling her to act. And I believe that when we do this with children, rather than we get stressed about the exams that they've got to do in the final year of high school because they're not studying hard enough. And you might say, well, how can you give a child of that age, 17 or 18, that sort of authority in a sense, that sort of a purpose? Why not? Why not? And it certainly made our relationship during that time a whole lot better because there was no overt pressure from me. I was empowering her and I believe I did absolutely the right thing. And I believe I do that with my children generally. And I do that with people I'm working with, people, uh, you guys. I mean, it's this is the way that we, we get better results, mm -hmm. I believe. Phoebe. Yeah, <laughs> when, when you were sharing that story, I, I, I again, I, I was remembering my parents who said, you know, in any way, if you want to study, we are here to support you. That's fantastic. And that was that was the message which uh, is again even enabling <laughs> me now to act. And and again, uh, this is the same message which I am repeating now with my son. Well, Whatever you want to study, we are here to support you in that process. Well done. And well done. how how uh, that you know how how that trickled down in in, in our families and imagine that it it also is something which uh, one of my uh, departmental leaders said we are here to support you as a staff member to learn mm -hmm. we are here to s s uh, sponsor you we are here to uplift you in that process a and that message is resonating with me I I and I, I try to bring that in in my interactions helping people to uh, learn so that they can uplift more people to that that space so what about the fifth practice? Encourage the heart. I, can I use the sequel of my story? There is a sequel for my story. Of course. Now, now my son and do, uh, my son and my daughters are grown up, gr I mean grown more, and now we cannot take them to the mall, not to buy t-shirts, not to play games, nothing attracts them in that mall. And still the wife must go to that mall. All right. <laughs> so that day, we had to leave. And the problem is, uh, we already had issues with the son. Uh, you know, the son bullying the his younger sisters. This is a very uh, known. Uh, so what to do? I'm leaving them together now. And there is no supervising of dad and mom. The, the leaders, the managers, the supervisors are leaving home. So imagine what will happen. So I was thinking what to do at the door. I told him, come, come here. I have something to tell you. Yes, dad. See, uh, we are, your sisters are here now. And dad is not here. But guess what? You are here. You are their uh, older brother. In fact, I want you today to be in my place. You are dad today. You are not the big brother. You are dad. You are your daughter, my daughter's daddy. Please take care of them as dad takes care of them. I won't tell you how. He said, okay, dad, I, I will do that. I promise. <laughs> and guess what? He fulfilled he his promise. Wow. The only day in his life that he was kind to his sisters was <laughs> that day. <laughs> well, maybe and... he how well it was that he followed it up afterwards. 
did it again. <laughs> Ah. But he became an angel <coughs> that came to Nasori. So, uh, in, encourage the heart can have different ways. I, I didn't mean to encourage his heart. I just wanted their sisters, to, his sisters, to be safe. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> and, and they were. And they were. And so they were, yeah. As a parent, let's go right back to the child who is growing up. And what do we do to the child? Some basic things as a little baby. The, we smile at the baby and the baby looks up at us thinking, what's going on? Yeah, okay, okay, fine. And then the baby starts to re replicate, copies, does what we do. We smile, hello, little baby. And yeah, the baby yeah. looks, <laughs> oh, and the baby does that. And we know that that very act, that physiological reaction to when you smile creates a positive sensation in the brain. And, you know, you can't smile and feel terrible. Once you smile, it changes your mood state. So the child learns to do this. Dad smiles or mum smiles. Come on, come on. And they replicate and they learn from us. So we're kind of getting into this encouraging this state at this early point. But the next one is when the child is taking, starting to take their first steps. We've all been there, haven't we? When the child starts, yeah. come on, come on. And we're encouraging them. And when they take their first two steps, we give them a big hug or we, oh, wow, we're so excited. They feel this. They don't say, oh, well, I've done two steps. That's enough. I'm not going to do it anymore. They, <laughs> they know that they've done something really good and they want to keep doing that because we have, and we keep doing this as parents and we should keep doing this as parents throughout their lives. I do it to my children and I know how important it is for them to be encouraged and I'm sure you can give me examples, each of you, of that experience with your children. Yeah, I, I like to uh, bring, uh, you know, that that encourage the heart practice. And I, I think in most families, that is what is lacking, the appreciation. Must, maybe, yeah. Say, saying thank you. Yeah. And imagine that if we start saying that word thank you in our workplace as well as in families, thanking for a beautiful day, thanking for the meals, thanking for the blessings which we have. And I'm sure that creates a positive ripple effect. Yeah, I it's... remember a story by Indra Nui, who was the CEO of Pepsi. She wrote a thank you letter to the parents of her immediate reports, mm. thanking the parents for having their son, their daughter, developing them into better individuals. Mm. And when parents receive that letter, how appreciative they are, how proud they feel, yeah. and how that translates to the uh, their sons and daughters who are working with Indra Nui. So imagine that. So I, I think uh, I have to do it more in my home, saying thank you. Let me say this. And encourage. The, the, it and is, encourage. It is, John, it is important. And the research shows, the psych from psychologists will tell you this, that the, the relationships, husband and wife, where there is gratitude expressed freely, by each partner to the other, thank you for dinner, thank you for the coffee, thank you, gratitude, when they actually say thank you in a simple way for the things that are coming out of this relationship, the relationship is much stronger than where there is none of this gratitude. Some people just say, well, she's my wife, she's got to give me a coffee. She's my wife, she's got to make me the meal. That's what, she's, that's what wives do. No. Gratitude builds the relationship when you say thank you, when you encourage the heart. It strengthens that relationship so much. Leadership challenge, got it right in terms of not just the, 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 um, the, the, the workplace, but family. Let me make two points before we wrap this up. Uh, we talked earlier about how we identify with people, parents, and, and, their, and how that impacts on our behaviour. When we are often, as leaders and the work that we're doing, we ask people, who influenced you most about leadership in your early... What do they say? My father, my mother, my uncle. Typically, this is the response that we get. So it comes back to family, leadership in, in the family situation. 
And the second point I want to make is this, that I know a certified master of the leadership challenge. Your name is Brittany Maker. And Brittany is doing a doctoral thesis on parenting and the leadership challenge. Well, she is going to become Dr. Brittany when she's finished it because of the work she does and what we've just talked about. And that is the importance of the five practices and family leading at home. Final comments, gentlemen? Uh, I have two comments also. Number one is that uh, we are uh, the Leadership Challenge Middle East, and we talk every week about leadership. Uh, so mainly it's at work. Now today we said family. If the viewers see that these two things are two different things, I would encourage them to replay the video and uh, apply each one at work. It also applies because our family teaches us and we what to do at work. What we do at work is a learning environment to go back home and apply. This is the beauty of the leadership challenge specifically and leadership in general. My second comment is if we are three podcasters, three in the panel, and only one and two of us always bring uh, examples from their children, and one of us brings examples only from his dad, what does this say to you? Does he want to say that we are older and he's younger? Phoebe? <laughs> <laughs> Phoebe, yes. all your examples are your dad. And me and Graham, all examples mostly are me and uh, us and our children. You want to play younger, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, again, I, I, again, uh, you know, sometimes uh, I was just thinking, have I given more prominence to my father? But again, it is equally my mother too. And again, uh, those those who are listening, you know, it is parents and how they shape our environment. And Absolutely. there is no gender bias in this conversation. So it is just spontaneous flow of words which comes in. Thank and, you for saying that, yeah. yeah. And, and, and again, you know, um, we, we, whether it is my wife, my son, they all have an influence on us. And what I have observed is, when I say thank you, when I appreciate that have, a beautiful positive atmosphere in in at home and that that makes it you know and is there any cost for that no appreciation is of zero cost but it is our words that make that impact whether it is at home or at workplace so yeah. mohammed so uh, it is not about young and old it is about that spontaneous flow which came. and your parents really your parents are proud parents so uh good for you and and our and, parents and, and, and again, them all thank you thank you Mama. so again uh, like this conversation with graham this conversation with you that that positive encouragement makes it motivating to show up every week thank you so, gentlemen, the leadership challenge, as we know, doesn't just apply in the workplace. It is fundamental to the way we live our lives, totally, whether we're at home, whether we're in the office, and even which whatever faith you follow, the same thing applies. Quite Usually when I'm presenting this program to uh, an audience or a group of people that are predominantly uh, of the Islamic faith, <clears throat> I get when I get to the uh, having outline the five practices and we've talked about them and so it's usually in the second day i'll say so i want you to tell me which leader in your faith do you believe followed the five practices and it takes about a second and a half before someone will give me the answer the prophet muhammad peace be upon him family faith these practices are not foreign they're not from some outer space or some new fangled set up where they have been proven over the years and way 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 back they were being lived by the prophet gentlemen 
on that note, do you want to add a comment, Mohammed? Uh, the comment is left to Phoebe, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, so friends, um, subscribe to our channel, connect with us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and other platforms. There's Let us continue the conversation. There's another one. There's another platform, and that is Facebook. We are now coming soon. Facebook. So please join us and have conversations with us on our Facebook group. So then, you, mean, you mean the family? Our family is growing. Our family is growing. Our family is growing. <laughs> Gentlemen, have a great week. It's always been, as usual, it has been and always is a great pleasure to, to learn from you as we continue to learn from each other. Have a great week, gentlemen. Bye. Thank you.